Hello there, this is David from David Books and Comics, and today I'm going to talk about the Amaro series uh, created by uh, Charles R. Saunders. Now, I first came across Charles R. Saunders' work years ago in an anthology book edited by Jessica Amanda Sammonson called Amazons. In one of uh, his uh, short stories that featured another of his uh, major characters um, uh, in the African, a kind of alternate African setting, long before colonization. The character's name was Dosoyu in, uh, in a um, short story by Saunders called Agbui's sword and it features this Amazonian warrior woman who rode on this uh, uh, buffalo this kind of uh, warrior buffalo a war bull called Gbo which she rides in uh, in all of the stories the stories were subsequently a uh, that story and uh, that was published in Amazon, and another a story, uh, the second story that he wrote, was published in this book. It was called Sword and Sorceress, and it's edited by Marion Zimmer Bradley. And that's the song, uh, the uh, story that Charles R. Saunders wrote. It features an introduction by the editor, and uh, it's a short story describing a scene and then it talks about the uh the bowl her warrior bowl uh the bow and uh describes how desoy uh, eventually escapes from uh these people these bad guys who are trying to uh, take advantage of her it's a uh, sword and sorcery tale as evidenced by the, the anthology title, Sword and Sorceress. So the two stories were eventually published in um, 19... Yeah, it was in 2012, 2011 actually, uh, and in a fix-up novel called simply called The Soy. And then, uh, subsequent to that, uh, they, uh, the novel, uh, he wrote another novel, also published around the same time, t 2012. It was self-published in, um, in, uh, in Sword and Soul uh, Media, something that, uh, publication that he uh, himself created, uh, Charles R. Saunders created. Anyway, a lot of the Amaro stories first appeared, uh, that made up the Amaro novel, first appeared in, um, in a fanzine edited by Jean Day. Now, Jean Day was, the, was an artist who worked for Marvel Comics and eventually drew um, Master of Kung Fu. Initially, before that, he also worked for a Canadian uh, magazine called Orb, where he did uh, stories and, and published those in the magazine. But he worked on Master of Kung Fu. He died. Uh, he died young. In the he, he, I forget what issues he drew, but he drew the last issues. I have the entire run, with the exception of one or two issues of the Master of Kung Fu series, and then he wrote in, he drew the last issues of the, some of the last issues of the Master of Kung Fu series. He died young at the age of 31, back in, uh, uh, in the 1980s, early 1980s. So this is the cover, which I don't have, obviously, of the first novel, but I do have the other two novels, and I'll show you those. This is, by the way, what he looked like. Now, Charles R. Saunders uh, was born in Pennsylvania back in 1946. He uh, died in, in Canada. He lived 
the rest of his life. He, he, he moved to Canada when he was quite young, in his uh, early 20s, and uh, lived in Nova Scotia. And uh, there he uh, wrote both nonfiction and published and sent his novels and short stories off to publication. Eventually, the uh, short stories uh, that he published in, in the Daw Book series in the Amazons, in uh, this uh, anthology, and uh, he, he caught the eye of uh, Donald A. Wolheim, the, the editor and publisher of Daw Books. And uh, he uh, encouraged Charles R. Saunders to create and fix up his short stories and uh, or his short stories that were published in, in, in the fanzine that, edited by Gene Day, encouraged him to create the, the Yamaro series. So he did the first novel, this one, and eventually uh, published uh, these two novels. This is what Charles R. Saunders looked like. This is from an article in the New York Times, uh, d uh, written uh, and, and published in January 21, 2021, uh, about a year uh, after, a few months later after he died. And uh, so this is the first novel, Imaro. This is the second novel. And we'll look through that. And you see, dedicated to Jean Day. And you see, this is a paperback original and a second impression. So that's that one. Beautiful cover. The cover is by James Gurney, I believe. James Gurney. Here's the, the, and here's the third, uh, third novel in the series. These novels have been subsequently uh, published and re-edited. And this again is a second impression. And this one is copyright date 1985, paperback original. Daw Book 649 and Daw Book 566. The uh, first Amaro book was a Daw Book 459. Now, the Amaro series is, without doubt, sword and sorcery. And it's uh, modeled and uh, after the sword and sorcery traditions that are created by Robert E. Howard. More Robert E. Howard. Charles R. Saunders cites uh, his influences as uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs and uh, Robert E. Howard. Now, the, the main character in all these stories, of course, is Imaro, who's the son. In the first novel, we don't know what his origins are. We know who his mother is. Her name is uh, Katisa. And then in the second novel, he... Uh, confronts and discovers his uh, origins. Uh, his, uh, he's assisted throughout his adventures by um, Pomphis, who's a uh, Bambuti pygmy scholar and former jester, and becomes a close friend and sidekick to Imaro. In uh, the third novel, uh, trail the trail of Bohu. He meets his uh, his nemesis, his arch enemy, um, named Bohu. And uh, there, the stories are well written, as you would well imagine. And uh, he himself was a uh, professor of literature. He taught at. Uh, Seneca College here in Ontario and uh, in other other uh, and other places in uh, in uh, Nova Scotia. So uh, 
he uh, continued to write, but uh, eventually, when uh, during the COVID crisis, uh, a lot of things shut down, especially in the province of Nova Scotia. And uh, he um, had little contact uh, with friends. Eventually, he became uh, isolated from his friends and died relatively in obscurity in uh, May of 2020. It's kind of a tragic end for someone who uh, created one of the uh, uh, seminal uh, character in, in Amaro. So uh, that's the uh, Charles R. Saunders Amaro series. Uh, sword and sorcery, uh, but with the unique twist of taking place in uh, the African continent, in an alternate version of the African continent. Um, well-written stories, beautiful cover. This cover, let's see. Let's have a look. The cover art is by James Gurney. And that's the dedication. All right, so I'm going to show you this, and then I'm going to show you my collection. I thought I'd stay with the theme of the African continent and show you my collection of the uh, jungle action appearances of the Black Panther. So this is uh, jungle action number five. And this is actually a reprint of a... Uh, an early, uh, earlier Avenger uh, comic book, The Monarch and the Man Ape. Uh, I don't remember the number of the which Avenger uh, issue it was. The cover art is by John Romita. The interior art is by John Basima. Written by none other than Roy Thomas. So that's number five. And then I became enamored with this story. It's called The Panther's Rage. And uh, this is the uh, first appearance of uh, Killmonger. And this was an 11 issue um, continuity uh, created by writer uh, Tom, uh, Don McGregor. It's a well written uh, series of uh, issues. Of jungle action which I insisted on collecting and I collected the entire run uh, of the uh, Panther's Rage it features the this is the issue where it shows the uh, T'Chaka his father uh, dying killed by the uh, by the evil Killmonger anyway so it features as you would expect, in a, in a long series of issues, a map. So that's that. Issue number six. I'll show you the interiors of issue number seven. Again, Don McGregor, Rich Buckler, Klaus Janssen, inking. Okay. A very good condition. And this is issue number eight. Beautiful artwork. And it continues the Panther's Rage. Some great artists worked on this. Uh, Rich Buckler, Klaus Janssen. Roy Thomas edited. So that's number eight. There's number nine. It's a Gil Kane art. Number nine.
the interior art, I don't know if it, I can't remember, I think it was, uh, could have been Billy Graham. Don't remember. Here's number 10, Gil Kane. Nice Gil Kane cover. This is very good. Here's number 11. Baron Macabre. Lord Kanash and Death Makes Three. Gil Kane art, cover art. And there's cover art. There's Eric Killmonger on the cover. And that's uh, cover art by Rich Buckler and Klaus Janssen. So that's number 12. Like I said, I collected the whole series when it came out of The Panther's Rage. I couldn't put it down. It was uh, such a well-written story. Great continuity. This is number 13. Cover art is by Gil Kane and Klaus Janssen as evidenced by the signatures. And this interior, this is number 14, and the cover art looks to be Billy Graham, African-American artist. It's that one. And this is number 15. Number 16. I believe it features his origin also. Venom is his name. So that's number 16 and 17. That's the climax of the Panther's Rage. One of the things I made sure is that I collected the entire set. I couldn't put it down because there was uh, the continuity was just excellent. McGregor had a vision, Don McGregor, the writer, and uh, he certainly fulfilled that vision in uh, this series of uh, comic books. So that's number 17. There's number 18. That's the epilogue, supposedly. And the new uh, series was an ambitious attempt. The cover art is Gil Kane. That's creases, well read issue. Here's number 20. Twenty-two, I don't have twenty-one. 24, first appearance of this guy. And I've always loved the Black Panther, so guess what? I got number one of the uh, Christopher Priest Mark Pichera series. Got that one. And I got this, uh, this one by John Romita, Klaus Janssen. And I got number two. I think this is a key issue. Not sure what, what it's for. All right. <clears throat> so there you go. This is my uh, foray into Charles R. Saunders, a great writer. He died at the age of 73 in May of 2020. Uh, alone and they're not sure what the cause of death was so i hope you enjoyed this little foray into my collection of 
uh, Charles R. Saunders. I am missing the first novel. Subsequent uh, editions uh, and updated versions of the Amaro series were published, and they're quite affordable nowadays. These ones are not. These ones on eBay uh, seem to go for too much money. So uh, give me a like if you enjoyed what you saw and uh, continue to subscribe. Thank you all who have subscribed and I will um, do more of these uh, the, my, and share more of my collection. All right, thanks. Bye.